In this lesson, we want to review solving linear equations in one variable. So over the course of the last two lessons, we reviewed the addition property of equality along with the multiplication property of equality. And we looked at how to solve some kind of single step equations. And towards the end of the last lesson, we looked at some things that were a little bit more complex. But in this lesson, we want to put everything together and show a four step method that will enable us to solve any linear equation in one variable. So any equation of the form ax plus b equals c, where again, a does not equal zero. So the method starts with step one. We want to simplify each side separately. So this is just where we combine any like terms. We clear any parentheses we might have. Basically, we get things as simple as we can. The second step is to move all variable terms to one side and then move all constants to the other, okay? So the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna use your addition property of equality. Then the third step is to isolate the variable. You're gonna do that using the multiplication property of equality. And the last step is to check the result. There's absolutely no excuse if you have time to get a wrong answer when you're solving one of these equations. It is so easy to check the result. You can make sure right then when you're taking your test that you got the correct answer before you turn it in. Okay, so it's very important to check. All right, for the first example, we have 3x plus 12 is equal to negative 8 times the quantity negative 4x minus 6 plus 4 multiplied by the quantity negative 7x minus 4. So the first thing I want to do again is simplify each side separately. On the left, 3x plus 12, I can't do anything with that. That's as simple as I can make it. On the right, I can clear my parentheses. Negative 8 times negative 4x is going to be 32x. Negative 8 times negative 6 is going to be plus 48. Then 4 times negative 7x would be minus 28x. And then 4 times negative 4 is minus 16. So let's scroll down and get some room going. Now what I want to do is combine like terms over here, because I can still simplify. So on the left, I still have 3x plus 12. On the right, 32x minus 28x is going to give me 4x. Then 48 minus 16 is going to give me 32. So now each side is as simple as I can make it. So my second step is to move all variable terms to one side and all constants to the other. So a variable term is a term with a variable. So 4x is a variable term, and so is 3x. And then constants are just numbers. So we would say 12 is a constant, and so is 32. So I want to move 12 to the right side by just subtracting 12 away from each side of the equation. And so let's just go ahead and say we have 3x plus 12 minus 12 would be 0, but let's just go ahead and show it. So plus 12 minus 12 equals 4x plus 32 minus 12. So again, this guy would cancel and just be 0. So the left side now is just 3x. And this is equal to 4x plus, we have 32 minus 12, which is 20. So I want to move this guy over here now to the left. So I would just subtract 4x away from each side of the equation. So let's just go ahead and say minus 4x and minus 4x. Let's just go ahead and do this vertically because it's a little bit easier. This is going to cancel, right? 4x minus 4x is just 0. On the left side, 3x minus 4x is negative x. Or if you're more comfortable, you can write this as negative 1x. That's fine, too. And this is equal to 20. Now, my third step, now that I have a variable term equal to a number, is just to isolate the variable. So what's being done to the variable? In this case, you have a negative x, or again, a negative 1 times x. So you can multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1, or divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. In this case, it really doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and divide by negative 1 on each side of the equation. And so negative 1 over negative 1 is 1. So you have x is equal to 20 over negative 1 is negative 20. So this is our solution. x equals negative 20. So let me erase everything and we're going to check. So again, we said our solution was x equals negative 20. And I'm just going to plug in a negative 20 everywhere I see an x. Okay, we're going to evaluate each side and make sure that we get the same value. So on the left, you'd have 3 times negative 20 plus 12 is equal to, then on the right, you'd have negative 8 times the quantity. You'd have negative 4 multiplied by negative 20, then minus 6, so that quantity there. So then plus, you'd have 4 times the quantity. You have negative 7 times, again, negative 20, 
the minus 4. Okay, so that quantity there. And let's just go through and simplify. So 3 times negative 20 is negative 60. And the negative 60 plus 12 is negative 48. So let's write negative 48 over here. On this side, negative 4 times negative 20 is 80. 80 minus 6 is 74. So you would have negative 8 multiplied by 74. Then plus over here, you'd have negative 7 times negative 20, which is 140. And then 140 minus 4 is 136. So plus 4 times 136. So this is negative 48 is equal to negative 8 times 74 is negative 592. Then plus 4 times 136 is 544. So if you sum negative 592 and 544, you're going to get negative 48. So you would get negative 48 is equal to negative 48. So the left and the right side are the same value. So we can go ahead and say this solution is correct. X equals negative 20. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So we have 11 times the quantity 2x plus 3 is equal to negative 3x plus 9 times the quantity 1 plus 3x. All right, so again, we want to simplify each side separately to start. So on the left, I'm going to multiply 11 by 2x. That's 22x. Then plus 11 times 3 is 33. This equals, you have negative 3x. Then plus 9 times 1 is 9. Then plus 9 times 3x is 27x. So on the left, I can't really do anything else. I just have 22x plus 33. On the right, I can combine like terms. I have a negative 3x and a 27x. That would be 24x and then plus 9. So now that I've simplified each side as much as I can, I'm going to move all the variable terms to one side and move the constants to the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy over here and I'm going to move this guy over here. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to subtract 24x away from each side of the equation. So this guy right here is going to cancel. 24x minus 24x is 0, so that's gone. Then over here I'm going to subtract 33 away from each side of the equation. And again, 33 minus 33 is 0, so that's gone. So on the left, I have 22x minus 24x, which is negative 2x. Let me kind of straighten that out just a little bit. And this equals 9 minus 33 is negative 24. Negative 24. So now I have a variable term equals some number. Okay. So essentially, at this point, I just want to isolate the variable itself. So I want to isolate x. And to do that, since negative 2 is multiplying x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. So let me scroll down just a bit. And so what's going to happen is this would cancel with this. Negative 2 over negative 2 is 1. So you'd have 1 times x, which is just x. And this is equal to negative 24 over negative 2 is positive 12. So our solution here is x equals 12. Again, let's check this. So I'm going to erase everything. So again, we said x is equal to 12. I'm going to plug in a 12 here and here and also here. So we'll have 11 times inside of parentheses. We have this quantity 2 times 12 plus 3. Okay, so that quantity. And then this should be equal to you have negative 3 times. You have 12 plus 9 times this quantity. So inside the parentheses, we have 1 plus 3 multiplied by 12. Okay, so that's the quantity there. And let's go ahead and simplify on the left side first to start. So 2 times 12 is 24. 24 plus 3 is 27. So you would have 11 times 27. So this is equal to over here, negative 3 times 12 is negative 36. And then plus 3 times 12 is 36. 36 plus 1 is 37. So you would have 9 times 37. All right, so let's see what we got here. So 11 times 27 is 297. This should be equal to 9 times 37 is 333 plus negative 36. So negative 36 plus 333 is 297. So you get 297 is equal to 297. So that tells us that our solution here, x equals 12, is correct. All right, so pretty straightforward. Let's just go ahead and look at one more of these guys, and then we'll move on kind of to the next concept. So we have 8 multiplied by the quantity 7x minus 9 is equal to negative 4 times the quantity negative 3x plus 10, and then plus 12x. So again, I want to simplify each side separately. So 8 times 7x is 56x, and then minus 8 times 9 is 72. This equals negative 4 times negative 3x is 12x, 
and then negative 4 times 10 would be minus 40, and then we have plus 12x. So on the left side, I can't simplify any further. I'm just going to copy what I have. So 56x minus 72. On the right side, 12x plus 12x is 24x, and then minus 40. So now each side is as simple as I can make it. Now I want to move all the variable terms to one side, all the numbers to the other. So this guy I'm going to move over here, and this guy I'm going to move over here. Okay. All I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in just one step. So I'm going to say minus 24x on each side of the equation. So this is gone, and I'm going to add 72 to each side of the equation. So this is gone. Okay. So on the left side, I have 56x minus 24x, which is 32x. On the right side, I have negative 40 plus 72, which is 32. So now I have a variable term, 32x, equals some number 32. So it's easy to find my solution now. I just want to isolate the variable x. And if 32 is multiplying x, I just want to divide both sides of the equation by 32 so I can undo that. So this is going to cancel with this, and I'm left with x is equal to 32 over 32 is just 1. So x equals 1 is my solution here. So let's erase everything and check. So again, x equals 1 is our solution. So I'm going to plug a 1 in here and here and here. So I would have 8 times. Let's just do this on the fly because 1 is easy to work with. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So you'd have 8 multiplied by negative 2. And let's just go ahead and write that as negative 16. We can kind of move on. So over here, if I plug in a 1 inside the parentheses, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 10 is 7. So you'd have negative 4 times 7, and that's negative 28. Then you'd have plus 12 times 1 is 12. So what is negative 28 plus 12? That is negative 16. So again, we have a true statement because we have the same value on each side of the equation. And so x equals 1 is the correct solution.